Welcome to the Social Marketing Course Map Round 3, in which we have a look at the closeout, the third and final element of the course. Now, strictly speaking, the assignments that you have just undertaken, assessment tasks one and two, have given you an opportunity to experience the limits of marketing as a mechanism for social change. By asking you to use these tools and techniques, you have found how they work. You have documented what you would like to use them for, what you'd like to do with them, how they sit together. Now you're going to be asked some very direct questions. And that is, how do these limits influence. And this is going to be done under the exam conditions. Very specifically, in social marketing, one of the challenges we face personally and professionally is being bailed up in a meeting room, on a comment thread on Facebook, on an email exchange, and basically having to defend our turf having to explain why, if social marketing is so effective, why didn't it save this person or solve this problem? And also being able to go and say, look, the solution that we can put forward doesn't solve the problem you have. We are not the solution to use. And this is something many social marketers will have difficulty saying. It's very hard to actually turn around and say, my technique is not the right technique, you need someone else. And this could be turning down a contract for a consultancy, this could be turning down an implementation campaign, this could be turning down money that keeps the company running, because what you can offer is not the solution that they need. And this is the ethics of social marketing. This is being able to step back and say, we can't solve that. Not, we're not going to try to solve that, but this is not what we do. This is not, this is a problem for which our solutions in marketing don't work. Therefore, we're not going to commit to something where we know we will fail because it's outside the specs of what we do. So to that end, the exam will have a question on the ethics of social marketing. It always does. It's not just that it's my favorite question to ask, but it's also the question that you will face most frequently. That ethics question will be the 20 pointer. The remaining two questions of the possible three will deal somehow on the technical and the tactical limits. So, let's get the headspace right for the exam. I don't believe in the exam as a punishment or a penalty. I don't believe that the exam is set up to ask you to do something you are not capable of doing. And also, under the principles by which we teach, a learning outcome is assessed at the point in time we have trained you, taught you, and given you the opportunity to experience all of the skills that you need to be able to achieve that learning outcome. So if I'm going to ask you to sit in a room for two hours and produce an argument around the ethics of social marketing, I know that you are good enough to do that. I have no interest in setting people up to fail. I have no interest in creating some form of super tricky trap because that doesn't validate you as a social marketer. And this is why I talk about this as a valued experience. You go in, you're going to be asked a question for which I don't know the answer, and I am hoping 
that if we get this right as a collective unit, I learn from you, I learn from your interpretation, but you also walk out of there having learnt something yourself. The process of answering the question is this last stage of learning. You go in, you meet the question, you use those skills that you've acquired over the semester, you write that answer, and you walk away knowing something new about the world. And that's amazingly fun. So this is why I talk about the exam being fun, because it's a chance to show off. It's a chance to walk in because there is nowhere else you want to be than right here, right now, taking on that exam because you want to know what that question is because you are dying to have a crack at solving that problem. But you want that challenge. You want to walk in there because this is your time. And this is what we're setting you on the course, on the path to achieve, to be able to walk in and go, give me that question. I've got something to say and a ton of support to back up what I want to say. So this brings us up to the very important final phase, the technical specifications. It is 40 points. It can be a make or break, but I want you to think of it as success or ultra success. The title belt is on the line, the best exam takes home the 40%. This means that anyone who is within 40 points of a high distinction walking into that final exam can take out a high distinction. There is, the title belt is on offer. You can perfect the exam and bring yourself from 40 out of 60, that 80 out of 100 and HD away. So it's there for the taking. To take that title, right confident. I will always invite you to use reference and citation. And in a closed book unseen exam, the reference and the citation being able to get to the end of a sentence in an exam room and know where it came from, to know which theory you're dropping here, to be able to say author and year is to say to me as the marker that you, the student, are in control. You got this. It is the ultimate validation of you as a student is to be able to go, I know this, I can use this, I can answer this question, and I can drop a citation. If you want to show off, the use of a reference list and bibliography gains you no points. It just earns you respect. Because in my examination career, as an undergraduate student, I was unable to do the reference and citation. So if you can do that, you are better than me. And that's why the challenge is here. This is why the invitation is there. I am giving you the chance in writing to show that you are better than me. So that's your invitation. You want that top of the pack. You want to showcase how good you are. I want to see how good you are. I want to see those answers. I want to see you be amazing. But I also want to know that you are better than me because then I know that should we ever go, toe-to-toe -to -toe on a campaign in the future, it'll be fun. So the final question, final wrap-up from the question set. Unfortunately, we are still writing things by hand in this here 20th, 1st century. It's primitive, it's crude, and you'll need to practice handwriting on the lead into semester. And because we virtually never do this anymore, A reminder in your question set, ethics of social marketing. The whole of the semester is at your disposal. Everything you have studied. Also, when you are writing your assignments, everything out of those assignments is fair game to be used to answer this question. Your questions are the two from three. 
the technical limit, the tactical limits, or the role of consumer rejection. The consumer has the right to say no. What does that do to limit the effectiveness of social marketing? If you're sitting there going, that's that, that's that's a big question. Yeah, that's why you've got a whole semester to get your head around it, because that's going to be one of the good ones. The only other house rule I would like to remind you of, and I remind you, will remind you of this again in the future, is that the 20% ethics answer should be roughly the same length of pages or effort or of energy that you spend on your 20% of two tens. So 10% should be roughly the same length as another 10% and should be roughly half the length of a 20%. That's the only limit I put in there, is that this is a resource budgeting question. You have two hours, 40%, and it's split across a single and a double, so they should, and the weightings are very similar in terms of lengths, words, and the allocation of resource and time. So it's a practice run. Under pressure, can you allocate your resources effectively and efficiently to address the single target audience that is me, the examiner? And can you create a social, an answer to a question in social marketing that best showcases your skills, your knowledge, your ability, and your interpretation, your take on those questions. Can you do it under pressure with limited resources? And you can. And that's what I'm looking forward to seeing. So I will be excited by the exam. I'm looking forward to marking the exams. And I really do encourage you to come into that room and have some fun.